this is a what do you want to call it due diligence video on mark 13 i'm in the middle of creating uh, my first draft of the mark 13 meter mark 13 plays on matthew 24 also just like luke 21 does and it's really remarkable um, for certain things that are of vital importance to hermeneutics, like right here. This I'm in Lego Humin Hoti. The, the E here is, mis, is a misspelling. That text in Mark, this early in verse 2, only appears in Biza's manuscript. Biza was the guy who sort of like picked up the mantle from Calvin. And the basic rule in, you know, textual criticism, especially with scripture, is you don't throw anything out, but if it's only one witness, you get real suspicious. Now, the only Greek witness that's early is Bisa. There. Okay? And actually... The very fact that it's sitting there in Biza is, as far as I'm concerned, conclusive proof that Mark actually wrote it. Even though nobody else shows it. There are a bunch of Latin manuscripts that have it, only one of which is older than Biza's. There are a bunch of, you know, other manuscripts that are a thousand years later that have it in this same place. But Biza's is the oldest we got. But because of the way it's inserted in exactly the same place that it is in Matthew, and exactly the same place the way it's used in Luke, and I'm going to do later videos on this because, you know, there are going to be a lot of arguments. That's what convinces me that the Biza stuff is right. Now when I say the Biza stuff is right, I mean this Biza stuff here. Not all of it. You don't ever pick a manuscript, how do I want to say it, that it's a really bad trend and shows poor scholarship that people side with manuscripts as a whole. In other words, you know, you got the stupid King James onlyist who can't even tell the difference in manuscripts. They can't even read them. And they invented this idea of something called an Alexandrian text type. There's no such thing. It's Western or it's Eastern. Western meaning that folks under the Latin Rome did it. Okay? Or Eastern meaning the folks under the, the Greek Orthodox did it. That's it. It's Catholic either way. And the King James only is think that, oh, well, somehow it's more Catholic and therefore worse and more corrupt if it's done in Alexandria, Egypt. Huh? They're crazy, okay? They're absolutely nuts, these people. Because they're saying, well, if Catholics did it, it must be wrong. Honey, you wouldn't have a Bible at all if it weren't for Catholics. Are Catholics wrong on almost every doctrine they name? Yeah. Are you wrong in almost every thought you have? Yeah, so am I. We're lucky if we get 20 to 50% of what we're thinking correct. Because nobody can know enough. Alright? So back to the point. Therefore, once in a while, kind of like a NASCAR race, you got a one verse that actually has text you can prove the original writer wrote and if there's no other witness it doesn't matter and I submit to you the syllable count is as how now I will be covering that in more detail in other videos what I was trying to do with this one but I got sidetracked on this because I'm so excited about it is to say you know as a general due diligence disclosure why am I making the meter choices I'm making because in Mark, unlike a lot of other texts, Mark has a lot, a lot of different, you know, textual what they call variations. Like, for example, see here, 
this is as as he was leaving the temple okay see that word ek it's out from okay is the preposition out from ek or is the preposition and we have to translate the same way in English we don't have the distinction out from apple in English ek and apo mean the same thing. Apo is slightly nuanced in that it means out from the source of a thing. And it doesn't really always mean that. Okay? So, if you want to say, where are you from? What country? You'd use apo. If you want to say, where do you come from? Is the destination you were just at? You'd use ek. In English, it's got that kind of a difference. But in Greek, it's it's obviously different here because this is two syllables apo and this is ek one syllable so the question is did mark write the word ek or did he write the word apo matthew used the word apo okay but mark isn't matthew mark is writing 39 years after mark is actually writing on passover 69 ad which is something you can tell from the way he does his syllable count I already covered that in the Mark Meter videos in Vimeo, so you'll have to go look at that if you want. But that's the question here. When you have a textual variant, what you're asking, it almost never makes any kind of meaning difference. But it gets to the heart of what the writer is writing versus somebody like copying what he says and essentially saying the same thing, but it's the copier's words, not the writer anymore. Okay? And we're real persnickety. I, honest to God, if you knew how hard it was to get the Bible you got right here on screen, millions upon millions of people sweating every day. It took all that to get that text you see on the screen. Millions of people dedicating their whole lives to whether or not that little apostrophe thing ought to be there. It's unbelievable. If you want to read a true heroic story, read the story of how we got our Bible. I suggest a book by Christopher DeHamel called The Bible. Um, and you can get it in Amazon. I think it's like 40 bucks now. And I think they've even got a paperback version, which is cheaper. But this is this is true kidnapping story. This is what the prophecy in Matthew 24 is about. The kidnapping and release of the Bible. It's the biggest story that there ever has been. And all of what you got and all of what you lack in your life today is due to it. I'm not making that up. It sounds dramatic and it sounds exaggerated, but it's not. And here's how we start to know. Is this the word that Mark wrote, ek, or did Mark actually write apo, and some copy is stuck in the word to cover up what Mark wrote, see, you know, kidnap, kidnap the actual word by writing another word instead, there's a lot of that that goes on in the Bible, and there are guys who make tons of money telling you that's what happened, yeah? But what they don't tell you, because they're too dumb to know, is that when you count the syllables, you can tell. That's how I know, for a fact, Mark wrote this. And he wrote it right here. It's not the only place he wrote it in Mark 13. It's the first place. For a fact, I know. Even though there's nobody else to support what I'm saying, except Beza's copy which I will get into later. But that's the essence of this thing. The kidnapping of the Bible starts with words that aren't really his. You know, when somebody's telling you, talking about God, and telling you something about God, like the stupid argument, the stupid claim, Oh, Jesus Christ died on Good Friday. No. Bible said it was Wednesday. But, you know, the Catholic Church thinks it talks for God and it says Good Friday and nobody bothers to look it up and question. That's the kind of kidnapping we're talking about here. It's pretty dramatic. All right, so, ek. Did Mark write ek? 
What do you mark? Right, Oppo. And somebody kidnapped Oppo and his egg. So these little bracketed things are in other copies of the Bible that are in Greek, in the original Greek. And they're saying, well, these words were should be there. And so you do syllable counts in part to find out if those words should be there. Now, obviously, if I crossed them out here, that means I'm saying, no, they shouldn't be there. And then you can look at this and say, well, I, brain, I, I don't agree with you. Okay. The point is you get to look at it to see. For centuries, you wouldn't have been able to see this. For over a thousand years, Joe Blow could not even look at what you're seeing on screen. He wouldn't be allowed to look at it. There were actually people killed by the church for trying to enable Joe Blow to be able to look at what you're seeing on screen. Now, would you understand it if you were Joe Blow? Not if you didn't speak Greek, which people basically stopped doing in the western part of the world around 200 A.D. From about 200 A.D. onward, even if they could see what you see on screen, they wouldn't be able to read it. Because the Bible got kidnapped, was only produced in Latin, and you had to be a priest to be able to do it. The common people were told stuff, hearsay, kind of like Donald Trump. Well, I didn't say that. Yeah, but we know he did because we have a recording of it. Well, what if we didn't have the recording? Then it'd be he said, she said. That's the way the Bible's been handled for for 2,000 years now. And we're so used to accepting somebody with degrees after their name. Accepting their word for what it says. We don't even bother to look at it. And for the first 10 centuries or so, we weren't allowed to look at it. All right, so this is pretty important stuff. Did Mark really write here... Tuyero. When he had just finished writing it here. Did he write it again? Here? In the same verse? Yes, no. See, that's part of the job of what's called textual criticism. So I'm going to go through these things. And, you know, your eyes might glaze over, but I want you to know why I say no. Okay? For example... Did Mark write ek or did he write apo? He wrote ek. How do I know? Because like every other writer of the Bible, he has an informal way of telling you when he writes. Almost all the writers do this. The formal way is the first time the syllable seven. That's a formal Dateline of when I'm when Mark's writing the Bible, his Bible book here, Mark 13, this particular chapter actually. That's a formal way of telling you because the the seven date is going to have to tie to a topic that's a historical event in the past or the future that you would be expected to know, and that sets the tone for the whole chapter or the whole book. All the Bible writers do this. Mar Moses was the guy who started it. And every single one of them do it. I haven't abstracted all the chapters of all the Bible yet. But every chapter I've extracted, this kind of system is used. And it's pretty easy to figure out. Okay? But, in the New Testament at least, maybe in the Old Testament too. I caught Daniel doing it, but I don't know about the others. In the New Testament, even when it doesn't seven, the first clause that the writer writes has got some tie, is a way of saying, Hi, I'm writing you X years from some date in the future you would be expected to know, or some day in the past you would be expected to know. And in this particular case, Mark is running 24 years until the millennium was supposed to start had there been no church. In order for that 24, therefore, to be 24, and I already know that from Mark 1, which uses a different formula to say the same thing. 
since I already know when Mark's writing this chapter because I know he's writing the book all at the same time, then I know that Oppo cannot be used because you see what would happen? Then this 24 would have to become a 25. And this actual pronunciation is the Jewish temple. So it's Hieru, not Hieru, which sounds sort of Japanese. It's Hieru, like Jerusalem, Hieru, temple, see, Hieru, Jeru, that's where it all comes from, okay? So this is only two syllables, so where am I going to get another syllable from? Well, what about all the other copies of the Bible out there? Do they have more syllables? Yeah, there's one. It's called Psi. That's the name of its. That's its name as an as a manuscript, and it has Apo here. Well, I can't do that. So I know that Mark wrote Ek. It's just like balancing a checkbook, because I know from chapter one that he's writing in 69 A.D. specifically at Passover, which is 24 years to when the millennium was supposed to start by a system of dating that starts with Moses and Genesis 1 that almost nobody bothers to learn. But I learned it because I had to. Alright? So I know Mark didn't write Apple. Alright, now I'm going to go a little more quickly. Okay, so now this is a, here's a definite article in front of Litoy and in front of Okoidomai. Why didn't I include that? That's standard Greek. Well, because, see, they're talking, so they're excited. When you're excited, you drop things. Oops. I got to drop things. Okay, so uh, you drop things. See, they're talking. This is the vocative. Teacher! Okay? Wait a minute. Teacher! Look! Beautiful stones and gorgeous building. So you're not saying beautiful the stones and gorgeous a building. You're too excited. So it's it's like look at list list listen to how it would sound in my badly pronounced Greek, but still good enough that you get the cadence. Potapoi Litoi Kai Potapai Oi Kodamai. See, it would screw it up. It would get all clunky if you say Potapoi Oi 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 Litoi. See, you don't have time for all that. Potapoi Oi Oi. See, you sound like you're drunk. Litoi Kai Potapai Oi Oi Oi. Oh, call them a, my. See, that don't work. All right. And since they're talking about the buildings, you don't need to say, oh, I call them my two yellow. Yeah, everybody knows what you're talking about because you're you're talking to him and you're all standing right in front of it. So you don't need two yellow there. Some tired scribe just added it. You know when he should have put it here. Alright, and you don't need these definite articles here because they make you sound drunk. And yeah, they're excited, but they're not drunk. See, it's not hard. I mean, there are other technical reasons why, you know, scholars exclude something. But I just, I just look at the grammar and I'm like, oh yeah, Mark didn't write that. Mark didn't write that. It spoils the whole effect. See? It's really cute. Now, that sums up the 43, and here's where we get really cute. Some other texts put in Mark what's a common word in Matthew. Kai ho Jesus apokrites. Epen autoi. 
Actually, Matthew does that. He has both this one and this one, and they both mean to answer and say. When you see in your English, it says, And Jesus answered and said. Yeah. Okay? So that's a common thing for Matthew to do. It's not a common thing for Mark to do. Mark is real staccato. Okay? He said, ba 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 all right, in the way he writes. And the reason why is because he's writing when he knows that in here, just as God foretold, being the foretelling being right here, the temple's going to go down, so we don't have time to apocrites, hi, Ben, hey, Ben. No, look. Kai, ho, Jesus, epen, atoy. Bing, 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 bing. I mean, because he's not quoting Christ. He's putting in his narrative to package what he's going to quote. So he's not going to mess around with Kai Apocrites Ipen. Just cut those four syllables out. You don't need them. It was relevant for Matthew to do it because Matthew's theme was about the majesty. Okay? It's Mark's theme is about, hey, stupid, why are you still in Jerusalem? Jerusalem surrounded by armies. Get the hell out. Okay? So that's why he's doing this. So we cut this word out because it doesn't belong there. And then our next word. Ooblepes. First of all, the Lord didn't say ooblepes. Okay. Matthew words it differently. And he does put the word oo in there. Okay. But here's the point. When the Lord is talking in 30 AD, there was nothing yet to see. When Mark is writing now, if you can't see the, the you know, Titus's armies are around there now because Vespasian has just decided he's going to throw his hat in to become one of the emperors and Otho has just died or is about to just die and Vitellius has taken over, honey, if you can't see Blepes, all that right now, then ooh, psh, ain't going to help you. See it? See, 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 look out your window, Jerusalem. Herod and his armies are there. Vespasian sometimes, because he's playing games about becoming emperor, is there. His son Titus is there. And his other son, who's going to be kind of a putz. Commodus is new kid on the block, sort of there, sometimes. All over. Armies everywhere. Jerusalem has been under siege since like 68 already. See? Okay? So that's why this is a 12, which is another thing to take into account. When, a when the text is specifically targeted at Jews, Bible writers tend to use a meter of 12. You can guess why. Not too hard. Alright, so now look. 8 and 12 is 20. 63, the same meter as Matthew used. So Mark is balancing to Matthew. And that's the same meter Luke uses. So Mark is balancing to Luke. Both of them. Mark is third. Ain't no other way for it to go. 